So we have the pond completely rocked in. However, I've left a couple of notches in the coping stone along the destination spot for placement of the underwater lights. I want to take a couple minutes to talk about underwater lights because I think they're really critical to your pond and your ultimate enjoyment. If you've done your homework right and you've placed this pond in your landscape correctly, you should be able to see this from the interior of your home, whether it be your bedroom, the kitchen, the family room, maybe the dining room. Either way, you should be able to be inside the house, look out into your landscape, see a beautiful backlit waterfall, see the, the pond glowing, you see the shadows of the fish moving around. It's just a really, really cool time, so I think underwater lights are super, super important. I'm going to take the time and show you a couple installation tricks, the proper placement of where they should be uh, to get you the biggest bang for your dollar. So we have our fixture here. I want you to take a look at it. It's a nice metal fixture. It's heavy duty. I have these four screws in here that help hold this. It's not just one that tightens up. And the, the, the plastic ones I find sometimes they'll, they'll get warm and they'll cool and then they'll start to warp a little bit and you'll get a seal. What I like this metal fixture right here is I can bolt these things down and have a nice tight seal and they're not going to start to you know, move back and forth when they heat and cool. So um, one trick I want to show you is, here's a little contractor secret. This is our lighting installation box and everything in this box is what I use for sealing. I have screwdrivers, wire connectors, I have a silicone o-ring uh, lubricant that I'm going to put on this guy. So let me show you what I do in here. This is an MR16 bulb that I have installed in here. And this fixture is great because it can handle a 20 watt bulb, 35 watt bulb, and even a 50 watt bulb. And so it's kind of neat when you have uh, different uh, wattages of bulbs inside the, fe the feature. So if you're going to put a deep, deep fixture down there, you might want to use a 50 watt bulb so it has um, better casting through the pond. We'll open up this guy and I'll show you the, the rubber seal that's in here. And then I'll use the, the silicone grease that I put on here. I'll show you how we do it to help keep a long last long uh, long lifespan on the, the o-ring. Pop these guys out. Okay, so there's a gasket that makes it watertight. And a lot of times you don't have to do this for the first year, but we do it right off the get-go. We'll, we'll just get a little o-ring lubricant on here. <clears throat> and it keeps that all moist for long lifespan. You don't need a lot, just a little bit on there. Okay, so I got that. Little MR16 bulb snaps right in here. Damn, it's, it's not nice and tight right there. I'll take this guy. And we'll bolt it back up. So the light's held in there real firm. <clears throat> O-ring's been lubricated. It's really important. You don't necessarily have to do it off from the get-go, but if you're going to say in your second and third year in the pond and you're changing bulbs, I would highly recommend getting that O-ring lubricant to moisten the O-ring. So this guy's good to go. Just takes a couple seconds to do. Now before I put these in the into the coping stones, I want to show you a little trick we do. <clears throat> if you put this underwater like this, uh, sometimes it's hard to get that bulb out because you fish this wire all through the all through the rock work. So what we'll do is before we fish it through, I'll come in and I'll put a couple of wraps on here two or three wraps like this and then I'll tuck this down in the water and I'll fish the excess wire back through the rock work and have it come out so this will be tucked in the rock and in the event that you need to change a bulb you can just pop it loose give a couple swirls pull it above water level and then you can do the maintenance on the bulb uh, without draining the pond 
If you'll notice this crevice right here, I've reserved this when we were rocking in the pond for one of our underwater lights. It's at about eight inches depth of water. And uh, as just another reminder, we'll spin a couple loops of wire right here for maintenance, future maintenance of the, of the light. And then what we'll do is we will set this down and we're gonna fish the wire right through the rock hole here. We want to disguise this guy. Put a little rock around here. Now, one of the cool little tricks that I do right here is I will squirt a little bit of underwater water, uh, I mean, waterfall foam on the underwater light, and it kind of pins it into place and locks it. When your fish get big, sometimes they'll knock the light around. So it's nice if you have just a little bit of foam in here to lock them in place. You don't need a lot. So that kind of locks it in. It can be a little bit of a pain when it's time to change the light bulb, but you only have to do it about once a year. And if you use LED light bulbs, which are available, you can go even longer. And then I'll usually just throw a little construction dust on that, let it harden off. And you won't see that fixture when you walk up next to the pond. That one's ready. Okay. Bless you, brother Gene. So we got our underwater lights installed in the pond. I didn't, I didn't install the, the waterfall lights yet, of course, because I didn't build a waterfall yet. But it's important to get these underwater lights installed at this point so we can carry on with our work. And um, but I think we covered it pretty well. If you have any questions, of course, I want you to post them in the comment section. I'll get to each and every one of them. I'm Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.